ever dream of just like hauling in these massive fish right from the shore? Mm-hmm. I mean, we were talking kingfish salmon, even tuna, like battling it out with you, and all you have is your rod in the open water. That's the magic of shore jigging. It really is. It's a global phenomenon. Yeah. You know, and it's rooted in these ancient Japanese traditions, mm-hmm. but it's really like taking the fishing world by storm. Yeah, it's really cool to see it kind of like explode. It is. And you're in the right place if you are ready to jump in. Absolutely. We've got a stack of articles and a really uh, cool YouTube video here. Awesome. Ready to turn you into a shore jigging pro, or at least at least less likely to get your line tangled on the first try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, first things first, right? You got to ditch the image of like leisurely casting a line and just like waiting for the bobber to go under. Right. Shore jigging is high energy. Yeah. It demands like a deep understanding of specialized gear and techniques. Right. It's a true test of skill and strategy. Yeah, you gotta work for it. Yeah. So let's unpack some of this gear because we're not talking about your grandpa's fishing rod here. No, no, no. You need some serious muscle to handle the weight of these jigs and the power of these fish. Absolutely. So think nine to 10 feet long, Fast action, heavy power. And when we say heavy power, we're talking about a rod that can handle a lure weight of 60 to 200 grams. Wow. So imagine it like this. Okay. A fast action rod is like cracking a whip. Okay. It bends mostly at the tip and snaps back really quickly. Okay. This gives you the power to launch those heavy jigs. So no noodle rods allowed. No noodle rods. But it's not just about brute strength. You need that sensitive tip to feel the bite, especially because those strikes often happen when the jig is falling. Precisely. You need to be ready to react instantly. Right. Now, when it comes to brands, there are a ton of great options out there. Yeah. You know, you've got Xenox Shimano, yeah. Major Craft, Exoga, Tenry, Yamaga, Blanks, Apio, Ripple, F- Fisher, Daiwa. The list goes on. It's overwhelming. It can be. Do you have a preference on kind of where to start? Well, I'm always a sucker for a good origin story. Okay. So maybe sticking with a brand that's, you know, rooted in those Japanese traditions would be cool. Right. But, you know, for someone on a budget, like, are there some solid choices too? Absolutely. If you're looking for a balance of, like, quality and price, yeah, Shimano is always a good bet. Oh. Their Saragossa Reel, for example, is a workhorse mm-hmm. with a buttery, smooth drag system. Oh, which is crucial when you've got a beast of a fish on the line. Music to my ears. A smooth drag is essential, especially for a newbie like me who is still mastering those fish fighting techniques. <laughs> for sure. Speaking of essential, let's talk about one line. Okay. What's the deal with braided line? So braided line is your best friend in shore jigging. Okay. All thanks to its low stretch. Okay. It gives you maximum sensitivity, transmitting every twitch and bump of that jig straight to your hands. So you're saying with braid, I'll feel like the fish is practically sending me Morse code through the rod. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'll feel every nibble. <laughs> I love that. Look for PE 2.0 to 5.0, which roughly translates to about 20 to 60 pound test. Okay. And here's a pro tip for you. Try using depth colored lines. Okay. It's a game changer for tracking your jig's depth, especially in those deeper areas where shore jigging really shines. Depth colored lines, you say? Okay, that's going straight into my mental shopping cart. I like it. Can't argue with anything that makes life easier on the water. Right. But before I get too excited about adding things to my cart, we can't forget about the leader, right? Absolutely not. This is it. This is it. This is like our last line of defense against sharp rocks and even sharper teeth. Exactly. This is it. So invest in a strong fluorocarbon leader somewhere in the 40 to 80 pound test range. Yeah. And you'll thank yourself later. Okay. Trust me, a lost fish due to a weak leader is a heartbreaker. Yeah. Especially when you're first starting out. Especially when you're first starting out. Okay. Leader check. Strong, stealthy, ready to handle some serious action. There you go. Now let's talk about the real stars of the show. The ones that make this whole technique so dynamic. The jigs. Forget live bait. We're talking metal lures that imitate injured fish. Okay. And let me tell you, the variety is mind-boggling. Really? It's got shapes, sizes, colors. Mm -hmm. It's like a candy store for fish. What? But don't let the choices intimidate you. Okay. It's all about understanding what works best in your local waters and for the specific fish you're after. Okay, so if, if I'm picturing this right, we're basically trying to put on a puppet show for hungry fish with these. Yes. Okay. We need to make them believe that our lure is the tastiest most vulnerable little fish in the area. Okay. And that's where choosing the right jig comes in. 
So we've got our arsenal of jigs all dressed to impress. Okay. How do we go from just having like a flashy piece of metal to actually convincing a fish that it's their next meal? That's where the technique comes in. Okay. It's uh, This is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. Think of it as learning a new dance move, but for fish. Okay. And just like any dance move, there's a rhythm. Okay. A certain finesse mm -hmm. and definitely a lot of practice involved. All right. So... Walk me through. What's the basic move, and then how do we, like, spice things up? Okay, so the basic retrieve is pretty straightforward. Okay. You cast out, mm -hmm. let the jig sink to the desired depth. Okay. And then you reel it in with a jigging motion. Okay. But here's where things get interesting. Okay. That jigging motion can be as simple or complex as you want it to be. What? Fast jerks, slow pulls, a combination of both... Long sweeps of the rod, short snaps. It's all fair game. Wait, so it's not just cranking the real handle as fast as you can? Definitely not. That's a surefire way to end up with a tangled mess and not a single bite. Okay. Remember, we're trying to mimic the erratic movements of an injured fish. Right. Not a runaway train. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Right. But with so many variations, how do you know where to even, like, start? So good rule of thumb is to match your jigging style to the fish you're targeting. Okay. So, for example, let's say you're going after Amberjack. Okay. Which is a powerful, aggressive predator. Mm -hmm. In that case, you want to use like a faster, more aggressive jigging action. Okay. With plenty of sharp jerks to trigger a reaction strike. So, it's like I'm sending out a distress signal like, help, I'm injured, come get me. Yeah. But in fish language. Exactly. Yeah. Now, let's say you're targeting something a bit more laid back. Okay. Like a grouper. Mm -hmm. They tend to be more ambush predators. Oh, okay. So a slower, more subtle jigging action with long pauses might be more effective. Gotcha. It's all about understanding the feeding habits of your target species. That's fascinating. So it's almost like detective work, you know, like figuring out the clues to unlock the perfect jigging technique. It is. But with all this focus on reeling in, I almost forgot about what happens before the jig gets to the fish. Is there a certain way to cast these things? Casting a shore jigging setup is a bit different than your typical casting technique. Okay. Remember, these jigs are heavier than your average lure, so you need to put a bit more oomph behind it. Okay. Imagine you're trying to throw a baseball for distance. Okay. You want a smooth overhand cast using your whole body. Okay. Not just your arm. Okay, so channel my inner baseball star. There you go. But once that jig is sailing through the air, where's the best place for it to land? Location, my friend, is key. Okay. When you're shore jigging your playground, is those areas where the water gets deep quickly. Okay. Rocky points, cliffs, jetties, break walls. Okay. Think of it like this. Okay. Those rocky structures act like underwater apartment complexes for bait fish, mm -hmm. which in turn attract the bigger predators that we're after. So basically, we're crashing the fish party by dropping in an irresistible snack right on their doorstep. Precisely. I love it. And remember those depth-colored lines we talk about? Yeah. Those are your secret weapon for making sure your jig is dancing at the right level in the water column. It's all starting to come together. But before I grab my gear and start channeling my inner fishing ninja, we can't forget about safety, right? Of course not. This isn't your grandma's fishing pier we're talking about here. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Shore jigging often means fishing in more exposed and potentially hazardous areas. So we're talking about like jagged rocks, unpredictable waves, maybe even a rogue fishing line or two whipping around. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those. It sounds a bit like an action movie set out there. Well, every good action movie has a safety consultant. Right. And that's what we need to be our own safety consultants. I like that. So first and foremost, a life jacket is a must especially in rough conditions. Okay. Think of it as your backup dancer. Okay. In case things get a little too wild on the water. Love that analogy. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Exactly. What else should we be mindful of? Always. Always, always let someone know where you're going and when you'll be back. Okay. That way, if you do have like an unexpected encounter with a wave or a slippery rock, yeah. someone knows where to send the search party. Solid advice. And it's not just about our own safety, right? Right. We got to, you know, respect our finned friends and their home turf, too. Absolutely. Leave no trace, my friend. <laughs> that means packing out everything you pack in. Right. Being mindful of any trash or fishing line that might end up in the water and respecting any fishing regulations or limits in the area. So it's all about keeping those good vibes flowing. Exactly. Both on and off the water. On and off the water. You know, it's funny listening to you break it all down like, 
This makes me realize that shore jigging is so much more than just like trying to yank a fish out of the water. Yeah. It's like a whole mindset, a connection with nature and a constant learning process. You hit the nail on the head. It's about the challenge, the thrill of the unknown, and that feeling of accomplishment when you finally land that trophy fish. Yeah. It's about pushing your limits both physically and mentally. And you know what? It's pretty darn empowering to think that you can achieve all of that from the shore. I know, right. With just a rod, Jeff. a reel, and a handful of well-chosen jigs. Exactly. So to anyone listening who's feeling that itch to try something new, something <laughs> exciting, something that will test their skills and connect them with the power of the ocean. Sure, jigging is calling your name. It is. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to invent the next killer jigging technique that has everyone talking. Now that's what I call leaving a legacy. Until next time, tight lines and happy jigging.